Good afternoon, welcome to Exotic PC's review of the new MSI GT 780 DXR-405 US. Uh, this is uh, one of the laptops in their um, new 17.3 inch uh, gaming series. This is one of the beefier ones. It's, it comes pretty well equipped. Uh, the screen on this, as you might be able to already even tell from the video here, is a matte finish panel. It does not have uh, any glare. It's the non-glare type. And we'll talk about that in a little more detail as we continue along on the review. Um, the components that this comes stock with are pretty beefy to start. Um, this laptop does come fully equipped uh, with the i7 the 2670QM, so the new second gen Sandy Bridge. Uh, it comes with 12 gigs of RAM, that's in a 4x3, so a 4 gig by 3 chip configuration. Pretty easy to upgrade that. We do have the 8 gig chips on hand if a person wanted to go more. Of course, uh, check with your salesperson as there are some other requirements you have to meet before you can go over 16 gigs of usable memory. The screen itself is at a full HD, so 1920 by 1080 resolution. Uh, and also your graphics card that's in this, since it's a gaming series, is, um, is the new GTX 570M, uh, which is pretty cool in this line. So you, you don't see, um, or you haven't seen yet, anyone um, producing something that can be sold uh, stock uh, that's not upgraded like one of the Clevo-based models uh, with anything greater than a 460 or a 560M in, the, in their high end. So... Um, you can get some more performance out of uh, a more, um, I guess you could say, streamlined machine. MSI, I think, is really starting to get into that uh, world as you see them creeping up um, in the different various big box stores, and you'll see their name uh, all over the place. So they're, they're really trying to make that attempt to, to get their name out there, and I think they're really starting to do that with some of the new laptops they've come out with, and this is certainly one of those. Uh, <clears throat> hard drive-wise, this does come with dual drives, um, RAID 0 capability. Uh, the stock is going to be dual 500 gig 7200 RPM drives in a RAID 0 configuration. Uh, so they will come stock as, as RAID. That, that can be customized and turned off if you want them to run independently uh, or if you want larger drives or an SSD and no drive in the secondary or a different drive in the secondary. All those things can be customized on our website. Uh, the Wi-Fi card on this uh, is unique. I normally don't talk about the Wi-Fi card, but um, because there's a trend lately in the laptop world of not uh, putting in a PCI-based Bluetooth card uh, and leaving that slot open for something else or not including it at all on the motherboard, um, they're using the new dual Wi-Fi cards, if you will, the Wi-Fi cards that are coming with both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi um, together on the same card. Uh, and this does use that configuration. The the card, the stock card, of course, is is a ABGN uh, card. It is uh, capable of Bluetooth, so just stock. You don't have to change anything if you want both uh, Bluetooth and the uh, and the wireless, of course. Um, and I'll take that back. Actually, it, it is just a BGN card. The um, Upgrade options, you you actually do um, do have quite a few upgrades for Wi-Fi. Some of them will not give you Bluetooth, and some of them will. So you, you won't want to be careful of that when you place your order, um, or when you're talking to your salesperson, and in, in that you um, specify whether or not that's important to you, because some of the best Bluetooth or be best wireless cards will not have Bluetooth on them. Um, but you can find a couple of compromises if you do want both. And you could also just use a USB-based um, Bluetooth card that um, about as big as a thumbnail. They're pretty small. So if you want the best of all worlds, you could do that too. Uh, since this comes with four uh, USB ports, uh, you won't be lacking too much if you decided to go that route. One of the things that's more notable, if you will, about this computer, and the MSI has been really focusing on um, kind of being different lately, it seems, um, in that they were the, really the first to put actually good speakers in their laptops. And if you've ever heard their Dynaudio uh, collaboration and their, and their audio systems, they're really quite surprising and truly a breath of fresh air for, for the laptop industry to get speakers that aren't abysmal or just 
average. Um, but what MSI has done on this new series is they've, they've collaborated again with Steel Series, which, as many of you probably know, is a pretty well-known uh, peripheral manufacturer. So, you know, different keyboards and mice and headphones and uh, a whole slew of different op options. But they've, um, they've done, you know, a similar thing to some of the other companies we've seen and finally offering a backlit keyboard. But this one's pretty unique in that, um, <clears throat> showing on the screen here, it does give you the ability to fully customize the colors. Uh, you know, you can make it uniform if you want to. But they basically give you three zones that you can, you know, you can actually turn them on and off by the zone. Um, they consider gamer mode just to be the left hand uh, keys to be uh, on. But they have different preset modes, you know, dual color and wave. So it will wave at you and breathing so it pulsates. Um, but you can customize it however you want to. Uh, if you uh, if you want to have it all be one color, you can. Or uh, they give you a little kind of close up here. They give you a variety of of other colors to choose from in in the scale, or you can just leave it as a white LED too. Um, but different shades of of reds and purples and blues and greens, yellows and orange. Uh, it's it's actually a, a pretty nice design. The keyboard itself feels pretty good to the touch. I find it pretty responsive. <clears throat> uh, one thing that I will mention that I didn't notice uh, is that the, they do put this little protective thing around it and the keys feel really funky until you remove that. So uh, if you get it and, and yours feels funny, you may not have remembered to remove the little plastic separator protector. But we just kind of take a look at it here and we'll we'll see it, it with the lights off in just a little bit so you can see that the keyboard is actually pretty bright um, but you can kind of probably see the color variation in the in the different zones here but it's a pretty standard keyboard <clears throat> uh, from most aspects uh, it is a unique in, in one way that some of you who, who like me who have a little larger hands might appreciate is that unlike most of the other laptops with chiclet style keyboards. The zero key on this is a little bit larger than normal and I find that on this keyboard uh, using the 10 key is slightly easier than than it is on some of the others that just have the smaller I don't know why the little over quarter maybe half an inch or so of, of larger size makes a difference but uh, to me it actually does. One of the other no notable things while we're talking about the keyboard is that in the, the touchpad itself, its location to where you type is actually in a really good spot. It's down just enough to where your palm and thumbs can rest comfortably in the home key positions without bumping into the touchpad very often. And they've given this handy little button right here, and all that button does is turns on and off the touchpad. So if you you know were on the fly typing and maybe you were bumping into it, uh, you can just quickly pop that with your thumb there, pop back on when you need to use it, and it's it's very fast react and a little GUI will come up on the screen and let you know that you've turned that on and off. Uh, but that is a very handy feature. The, the touchpad itself, MSI has switched over to Scintillic touchpads from Synaptic. Um, some like them, some don't. Uh, the features, they, they really try to offer the same type of features that that Synaptic does, um, but I, I think probably you know one of the main complaints about this particular computer, at least, or the touchpad, is that maybe the the touch sensors aren't quite as uh, sensitive for uh, the multi-touch features. So you know you're you're dragging and and you're opening and and expanding and contracting, uh, like I guess one would consider an Apple touchpad. Uh, a lot of the manufacturers have switched to those types of touchpads. That's what people have been asking for. Um, and these, of course, need to be you know, calibrated just like a Synaptic touchpad would. But um, the Scintillic touchpads are who MSI has switched to. Uh, why, I don't really know. Uh, but that is one of the probably more annoying things, if you will, that at least we've heard as far as feedback. Uh, I mean, to me, the touchpad seems 
fine enough just to use it normally. Um, and of course, it really wouldn't be used to game in most cases. Um, but uh, other than that, it, it's, it is responsive. It's not loud, if you will. Um, it's a little bit smaller than maybe some of the other touchpads are. I don't know if you can get a good look at it here in comparison to the rest of the computer, which is actually a pretty darn good size. Um, but it, it seems to me like it's in a good spot. Um, when I type on, on this particular computer, I don't really notice uh, that my hands brush it, so I don't really feel the need to press the little button. But uh, it was a really nice, thoughtful thing that MSI did here in that they took away one of, uh, one of the major complaints pretty much from any computer is that the touchpad is bumped too often while you're typing. As we come across the, the top, they do give some touch keys. Uh, so you'll see this panel up here. Um, each of them will control something a little bit different. Uh, and, and another really cool thing that they've done as well with this is they've They've given us an S bar, is what they call it, and they see this little star here at the top. If you bring that down, you can configure uh, a lot of those buttons through this method. So the P1 button that we just saw is the personalization button, and that can be adjusted through this top row here. Uh, but it also gives you your function keys, so you can put your accessories, I guess, and um, you know more popular programs up here for quick access. It's actually a pretty neat little, uh, neat little GUI. Uh, it allows you quick access to the Eco Engine if you're wanting to save power, pop it into sleep really quick, turn it off. Uh, we haven't really seen something like that before from any PC manufacturers, uh, and it works really well and it looks nice. Uh, it's really not very obtrusive because all you have is just this little star up at the top there. Uh, until you move over the star, then everything else pops up. But uh, that's one of the uh, cool features that they've done from a software standpoint. Um, the keyboard, and I don't believe I mentioned this before, but that is all software controlled. Um, they don't include, oddly enough, the uh, keyboard uh, controller on their drivers and utilities disk. So if you ever restore the computer, uh, you will need to download that from their website, but it's a small file and is downloaded very quickly, and it's easy to access from their website. They do have all their drivers and some of the some other things, a couple benchmarks that they give you access to from NVIDIA on there as well. Back to the touch buttons. As I was mentioning, the P1 button is uh, just a personal button that you can do really whatever you, if you want to set it to open up uh, Outlook, you can do that, or uh, really whatever function you want. This little button here that we'll see if we can get in on it a little bit that looks like a little movie reel. Uh, if you press that it brings up their Cinema Pro uh, which is just basically your uh, movie and music library. Um, it really is just a, a quick key button for the Windows Media Player. In essence that's what it defaults to. Um, the other button here is one nice feature about this and you probably will be able to hear it and pick it up from even the camera's uh, microphone, but I'll press it here, and you'll see that uh, in a second, you'll hear the fan sound basically like a jet plane. And it slowly takes off. It's basically the turbo fan feature and I'm going to turn it off here in a second once it gets full blast uh, so that I don't have to talk over it. Um, the computer itself is normally pretty quiet from a fan standpoint, uh, even when we're running benchmarks and things on it. Uh, it seemed relatively uh, average or on the average side of quiet. When you kick on the super fan, as you can hear, it's not so quiet. Uh, we're going to kick that back down, but the, of course the purpose of that is if you're taxing the computer and you need the extra um, <clears throat> extra cooling oomph, uh, that's the way to get it. And it takes probably about 20 to 30 seconds to ramp up um, and just about that to slow back down. But uh, it certainly adds noise and uh, airflow. Uh, the button here, this is just a quick key for the for the keypad. Uh, the newest BIOS 
uh, changes how it works and that new BIOS should come on the computer already um, but if you need it there is a new BIOS on our website but basically it just cycles with completely off and then in normal mode and gamer mode so this whole side shuts off in gamer mode and then this side stays on where you can shut it all off or keep them all on um, <clears throat> this is another key uh, hint if you will when you're first getting this computer is that uh, power key to the center uh, that, that one's obvious or at least should be uh, this here's your Wi-Fi button the computer doesn't come with the Wi-Fi turned on you have to press this button to turn it on and off and of course a GUI will come up on the screen again and we press it and turn it back on um, but if you're wondering why your Wi-Fi won't turn on that is the radio button to turn that on uh, the other here is Bluetooth if you decided to uh, change the stock Wi-Fi card to like a 6300 Intel or maybe one of the Bigfoot 1102 or 1103 cards uh, that button would not work basically uh, because neither of those cards have a Bluetooth built in where the Intel 6230 would or the stock uh, Realtek card and uh, a Theros card uh, depending on who they decide to use at that time would uh, would have that Bluetooth in. The next button over here Turn that off. Next button over here actually shuts off the monitor. Um, might be running something here, but we shut that off. Uh, turn it back on. Just a quick little tap of the touchpad kicks it back on. I guess maybe that's to conserve power or something. Um, the this is another con not uh, really a concern, but criticism of mine is with the uh, optical drive. They do not give you a button on the side to press. The only way to open it is to press that key up there. Uh, there is also a way to do that with software, of course, as well, within the computer. But um, that's that's one just weird thing that I think that they have done and uh, not giving us the option to manually open up the the um, optical drive. But uh, and that's a little gripe, I would say, in the scheme of things. And, and it works fine, it's just software related and sometimes software gets corrupted and then you can't open up your optical drive unless you you do it uh, with the old style with a little pin and stick it in the hole, which you still can do. The next thing I'd like to go over is the input output ports on the back and sides. As we make our way to the, to the rear of the computer here, I'll give you a glimpse of the back panel uh, and my oily hand fingerprint there. It's, um, it's made out of brushed aluminum here on, on the center area and then on the sides you just have standard plastic and just uh, the emblem there. It's not a sticker, it's actually embossed in. Um, it looks pretty nice. It's, a little, it's simple, which is I think good in some cases. Um, the back of it here, you'll see the, the jack packs are pretty nice on this particular computer. You've got a Kensington lock jack on the back your power, Ethernet, and we move to the right, we've got a VGA out. This is eSATA, uh, and then the HDMI, of course. You've got an air vent blowing out the back, and then also out the side here. And as we move our way to the right, these two port or ports, and you, uh, you may be able to pick up on the blue, uh, um, I'm not sure if you can there, uh, but they are USB 3.0 ports. We've got the standard 4-in-1 uh, memory card reader. A USB 2.0 port and as we make our way to the right here a little more we've got uh, connections to the audio card which as we mentioned before is more extensive on this computer than a lot of others um, you do have the green there with the headphone um, it's your headphone out the uh, pink one there is microphone that's the standardized there and then to the right we've got SPDIF out so the digital output if you wanted to run to um, in an older receiver where you didn't have HDMI as an option for audio transfer and then um, just a regular line out. As we make our way to the front here we'll um, not really have any input output ports to talk about but uh, we do have some LED indicator lights that we can mention uh, and as you you look here from the left to the right the leftmost is the Bluetooth and then you've got the Wi-Fi indicator light, battery indicator, and whether or not it's sleeping, and then the hard drive indicator. As we move on to the right-hand side of the computer, 
They've got two more USB 2.0 ports and then just your optical drive. So pretty basic on the right hand side. Most of your jacks are on the back or the left hand side. Uh, you probably can get an idea of the thickness of the computer here as well. Um, for a 17 inch, I would say it's about average. Uh, total thickness, the lid's actually pretty thick. So total thickness, like I mentioned before, the computer's not, not a small 17.3 inch by any means. Um, they were certainly going for uh, a gamer desktop replacement machine. The next thing we'll talk about is the screen and then and the keyboard here, which I wanted you to see in the dark. Um, so you can see it's, it's pretty bright. The, right now we've just got it set to the three different zones. So it kind of just goes from the, the light blue to, to a yellow to a purple. Uh, but as we saw before, that can be pretty much customized to whatever you want. The screen itself is pretty bright. It is, it is matte finished as I uh, mentioned earlier. Um, as, you, as you go off axis, one of my, always my main complaints, if you will, with matte finished panels, although I do use one myself um, and like it as I don't really sit off axis very often, is that they do uh, wash out more than glossies. Uh, at least most glossies as you get to the to the sides. It's the, this one isn't terrible by any means. It still can be seen pretty easily even from a, a wider angle but uh, it does wash out a smidge. It is much brighter as you can see in the center as we make our way across the 3D Mark Vantage uh, benchmark that we're running right now. Uh, your vertical viewing angles um, are not going to be as good as your horizontal ones, but they still are not bad. As you um, as you come up to the top, the wash is isn't nearly as bad as what I've seen from um, other matte finish panels that are in the same class and used in similar machines. Um, so as far as and a matte finish panel, this this is pretty nice. Um, the colors seem to, to not be too washed out. That was always my uh, complaint about matte finish panels in the past, is that uh, they seem to be too blue hued or washed out. Um, I will say that uh, as you look from the top, the wash isn't too bad, but um, the further away that we get underneath the panel, uh, the, the, it does almost completely wash out, um, but I'm sure that most of you aren't going to use your LCD uh, on the laptop in any way that you aren't really mostly right in front of it, uh, but it is important to talk about. Viewing angles are important. Um, as you can, you can just kind of see, uh, doing quite a good job there on 3D Mark as we move along here. One of the things I did want to cover a little bit, and it's a quite important thing, is uh, the temps on this laptop are um, surprisingly good for the components. You'd think that a GTX 570M and uh, you know beefy i7 uh, are going to put out a lot of heat, and I can guarantee you that it's it's pushing a lot of air, and the air is warm. Um, but the internal components are staying very cool. Um, most idle temps that I saw on this were anywhere from, uh, I think they're probably running it in, in one of the mid uh, power modes, so it was probably down clocking the CPU and GPU. Um, but average, if you run it in one of the lower modes, you're seeing about 38 degrees on, this, on the GPU, 40-ish on the CPU, which is pretty darn good. High performance mode, you know, it's going to be mid 40s for both, uh, maybe a little lower for the CPU, so that's pretty good. Um, running the, the benchmark here, uh, which we've done for probably about an hour by now, uh, just continuous, just to try to get uh, an example of, of some type of a long-term gaming uh, experience. Uh, the temps are, are pretty darn good. Uh, the GPU is so far has maxed at 63 degrees Celsius, which is pretty fantastic. Um, and the CPU is, is right there with it at about 60. 
Uh, we'll see after this run here. This will be our final run. Um, but overall, and that's actually without the super fan on, so turbo fan would probably Im improve those quite a bit. And maybe you can get an idea of how, how loud the computer will be. I don't know if you'll be able to actually even hear the fans too much uh, in their normal state. But that was, you know, right next to the fan. Using it in, in a standard way, um, I don't think the fan would really uh, be too obtrusive at all to, to the experience, especially if you're using the speakers because these speakers are just so loud um, and the quality is so good that uh, it's, it's really hard to think about much else when you're using them. If we um, get an idea of some of the temps in the hand rest area, we'll just use this uh, laser here and we'll, we'll do it in probably in Fahrenheit so um, most of, oops, well, prepped it, there we go. Um, so as you can see, hand rest, this is just 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's going to be cooler than your body temperature. It's going to feel cool to the touch. Um, you know, a lot of laptops, when they've been running for a long time, get warm. You know, as you move along here, um, we're just getting um, cooler and cooler as we move away from the warmer side where a lot of the things are going. Um, in the keyboard area, you're just a little warmer, of course, as you go up here. You're still lower than your body temperature, so it's still going to feel pretty cool to you. Um, but as we get in more to the mid components and away from the uh, from the, the metals there, which aluminum tends to keep them a little bit cooler, um, the middle of the keyboard seems to range somewhere around the upper 80s to lower lower 90s range um, which still is is really quite good um, and of course as we move more to the right less warm things are happening on that side most of your cooling and, and heating is is going on here on the left hand side of the computer as far as heat output out of the the vents the thermal vents there right now thermal vents are sitting at 98 99 degrees um, so max apparently it must have hit 105. That's what this says. Um, so as I mentioned, they're they're definitely pushing heat. Uh, this side's a little cooler than the other. Um, well, something must have spiked to 114 now at some point. I got all the way in there, but um, yeah, there we go. Now we're all the way in, probably hitting the heat pipe. But um, they're pushing warm air. They're doing a good job and they're not getting in incredibly hot and certainly while using it uh, you won't get that that feeling on your palms where uh, you just got so much heat on them it's uncomfortable uh, i wouldn't say that it's it's much for laps just based on how the fan is is uh, situated you certainly could use it but some sort of a lap desk would probably be more comfortable so it's going to be pretty warm as we can see here middle of our test here now our GPU is uh, maxed out at 68 and our CPU was maxing at 75 degrees Celsius, which is still great. It's still fantastic for, for really any, uh, any computer, especially uh, not one with a dual fan. Um, we'll open this up here in a little bit so you'll be able to see just how massive the fan is. You'll know why the cooling is, is as good as it is. Has we just finished up on one of the last runs here. I wanted to go over some of the benchmarks here that that um, we've been running on this new machine. Uh, this is a stock uh, stock run of just the performance run on 3D Mark Vantage. Uh, it does pretty well stock. This is not overclocked. Uh, the 570 cart looks like it's getting P11690. Um, and you can see the, the GPU score, 93.95, and then your CPU score. Um, so just out of the box, uh, pretty impressive um, overall as your 460M, uh, depending on the driver. And, and this, of course, is going to be stock MSI driver, too. So we haven't tried um, any updated drivers from NVIDIA or anyone yet. So... Um, that will just, as it did with the 560 uh, and 460, improve the performance quite a bit. Um, but I think at its peak, the 460 usually maxed somewhere around the 7400 to 8000 mark if you included the CPU score in there. So it, um, 
this is a nice jump up from from that. Um, even the 560, I think this is probably a 20 to 25 percent maybe a boost um, in performance uh, of a stock score. Uh, if we overclock it, which we do offer that that feature for you, um, I I believe we're squeezing you know probably another 1500 points or so. Um, just even being conservative out of it, so. Um, you're you're you've got some some GPU power here uh, at a at a really reasonable price for the performance. Hard drive performance here. This is just kind of a graph on and showing HD Tune Pro's uh, run of it. Um, just wanted to show you the RAID performance here. The dual 500 gig semi turner drives. It's it's pretty good. Um, as you can see, uh, as it always does during as time um, progresses, it gets slower, but um, this is over 40 gigs worth of, of read. We've got an average of 162.9 megabytes per second, um, which is pretty respectable for a mechanical drive. Um, so, you know, as you can see, really, the, the read times on, on these hard drives pretty good. So if you, you know, you weren't looking to spend the extra on the SSD, which as we all know, is going to be quite a bit faster, especially considering um, this machine does have SATA 3 ports, so you can take advantage of SATA 3 drives. Uh, we don't have any SATA 3 laptop mechanical hard drives yet. Um, I'm not certain uh, when that is coming, but uh, it eventually will as the technology ages. Um, just a peek at above here, above the HD Tune, just to kind of show you final temps of... Um, of this here we've got uh, 70 degrees Celsius for the max temp on the GPU and it looks like right around 76 for the CPU so that's pretty darn good as you can see it's probably you probably maybe you're laughing I don't know I am uh, the HW monitor still sees the processor as a 2720 because the 2670 uh, took over the same frequency range as the 2720QM um, this is the newest version of of, of HW monitor, but the, they they haven't uh, they haven't changed that yet. And for those of you interested in the CPU benchmarks, um, W Prime, which is the one that we use quite a bit, just to measure uh, or at least compare CPU speeds, uh, the twenty six seventy. Does 32 million calculations in 10.143 seconds, and 1,024 million mathematical calculations in approximately 342 seconds. So um, it's pretty good. Uh, that's a little better than um, for not really an entry level chip, but one of the entry level i7 chips. Um, that technically scores better than, um, you know, the previous first gen i7's uh, extreme processor. So, um, pretty impressive for what uh, for what Intel's doing here. So, not a not a bad package that uh, that you've got. All right, I just want to take a, let you take a peek here at um, just the inside of. Uh, what the internal components look like and how they're configured. Um, MSI will, if you buy a stock machine, they, they will put a, a break it, you avoid your warranty sticker over actually one of the, the holes to even access the inside here. So if you if you want it customized, that's probably a good idea to have Exotic PC do it uh, since we do have the authority to do that. Um, but just to kind of show you, you've got um, your, your two hard drives, one up here and, and one down there. Um, everything to install them is, is kind of built in here. Uh, one of the odd things about how they put this in is they do put these little uh, rubber stoppers to hold in the hard drive. Um, some of the machines don't have those, so we check all the machines and make sure that they come with that little piece that holds them in. This one actually has a bracket that fastens it in. But um, a lot of your components now are underneath of the keyboard area as well as. Uh, just that uh, speaker touch pad, or it's a speaker uh, touch panel, if you will. Um, you've got another two gigs of RAM underneath of the uh, keyboard. Um, 
we've got an open bay here as you can see and then one other stick of RAM that's there. Um, so it is an easy upgrade to 16 gig, um, pretty cheap too. Um, the Wi-Fi card and other RAM sticks, they're kind of easy to access as soon as you realize how to get that touch panel up. You have to be a little careful with it, um, but if you have a question about that, you, you can certainly give us a call and we'll tell you kind of all the ins and outs of it. But as you can see here, the fan is just huge. It's a really big fan as far as laptop fans go, which is why it's cooled so well. But you've got your CPU over here, GPU hiding over here. Um, upgrades on these, obviously, are really easy. GPU, um, I know there are some out there in the modding world who uh, do play around with that. Uh, we don't get into the, the GPU modifications a whole lot. Um, but uh, the CPU is pretty easy to upgrade, as you can see. It's just uh, three screws there. You don't take apart the rest of the fan and the apparatus, but uh, pretty easy there as well. But I uh, just wanted to let you have that, have a look at what the internal components look like so you could see the fan and uh, see everything else that's there. You know, the battery compartment is, is hiding out down here. Um, one of the things that's notable, if you're wondering where it is, and I'm going to pull the, the battery out here, so excuse me while I do it one-handed. Um, the Windows key and your serial number are down here. I'm trying to get a w far enough away from them so you can see both here. But you've got your Windows key serial number there. So if you ever need to use either one of those, you can. And also, uh, MSI's got a 24-hour tech support number now. It does just say the support hours are from 9 to 9, but it, that number that's there is 24 hours. Uh, they just aren't advertising it yet. So um, that's that's just an important little side note there. And thank you very much for watching our uh, review video here today. Uh, once again, this computer is MSI's GT780DXR-405US. Uh, it is available now and ready for purchase and in stock. Um, it's, it's certainly one for anyone looking for just a real fast computer with good features, uh, great entertainment side, good screen, good speakers, powerful graphics card. Um, upgrade possibilities, uh, great backlit keyboard, a lot, lot of things going for uh, this particular laptop, that's for certain. Um, you can read and see more at uh, www.exoticpc, which is xoticpc.com. Uh, we've got uh, sales people and, uh, and uh, technical support people here uh, on our live chat during our normal business hours, as well as a telephone which we'll be able to also hear and or also see on on our website as well uh, definitely feel free to leave us any comments and anything that you uh, want to see in the future on these videos as we'll be doing quite a few more of them coming up soon so if you have any particular benchmarks or tests or anything that uh, or any features that you would um, like us to, to uh, feature on one of these videos, so definitely just feel, leave some feedback, and um, we do read all the comments and answer as many as we can, and um, you know we will we'll definitely take a look at what people want to see. Thanks again.